Should I make chocolate mooncake or strawberry mooncake? <gasps> chocolate strawberry cake! So, there's this like yinger and yangerons, and they spin in this projected pattern which intersects fourth dimensionally. But it isn't a measurable function. It's got a whoosh! Mm -hmm. Hey guys, welcome back. We are playing Zoe today. Um, she's a burst mage known for her ability to deal insane amount of damage as well as being able to pick up summoner spells and item actors from the ground. Um, so Zoe is a lane bully. Um, her passive is a free Lich Bane passive. So every single time you use an ability, then your next auto attack is going to become empowered, dealing bonus damage. Her Q is a main damaging and wave clearing ability. Um, it's an ability that can be recasted, so it can give you two procs of your passive. Now this Q here is an ability that deals increased damage based on the distance it travels. So when you look at Zoe players, um, you see them throw this Q behind them and then forward, and that is to cover some extra distance. So this ability ends up dealing more damage. And then this E here, guys, is a CC ability. Um, you can extend the range of this ability if you um, throw it over walls and such. Um, if you have the um, cast indicator on, then you can see the range. But it is going to put people to uh, asleep, and then you can proc it with an attack or an ability to deal increased damage, which will also be true damage. So, so is a lame bully. And her Q as well as her E can be body block guys. Um, so it is a champion that wants to be pushing um, in the lane. Um, that's of course not something you can do every single time because it really depends on the matchup as well as the enemy jungler. If they have a very aggressive jungler, then you cannot be pushing. But because she has a very strong laning phase, she wants to be pushing because when the opponent is under the tower and farming, that's why she really starts um, poking them down. You want to abuse that free Lich Bane on your passive as well as your Q. Um, you can use a fast Q guys, because in the early game, it doesn't really matter that much that you throw it behind you. Um, that's more important later on in the game as the damage um, amps up. But in the early game, you want to get that poke damage off so you can really abuse that Electrocute as well. And your W um, is what Zoe is also known and hate it for. So whenever an enemy champion uses a summoner spell, they will drop that spell on the ground and then you can walk over it to pick it up and then you can use it for yourself. And you see this uh, small um, circle above the minion sometimes. If you execute the minion, then a random summoner spell item active or keystone active will um, also appear on the ground that you can pick up. But you have to be the one killing that minion. If a teammate kills the minion, then you will not get that um, Summoner spell or item active. Now when you use um, and summoner spell or item active with your W, then you also get um, a burst of moon speed as well as some damage that's similar to Ari's W. So you can pick up a lot of different summoner spells, especially in a team fight where people constantly use everything they have. But there's some stuff that you cannot pick up from the minions, and that is for example Teleport. Teleport is something you can only get if an enemy champion is using it, uh, because then they'll drop it on the ground for you to pick up. So your E guys, um, that's like your main engage ability. Um, that is the one that you want to use first and then follow up with Q afterwards. But that E animation is pretty slow, so it's very easy to dodge. So what you can do is that when you're trying to use it, people will often try to dodge it by moving behind, like sidestepping behind. So you throw it slightly behind them, um, like with most other skill shots, but in this case you have to throw it like even more behind them because this animation is so slow that even if you predict it well, then they will still end up dodging it. So. Throw it a bit further behind them um, compared to most other skill shots. And then when you put them to a sleep, you get a free Q to hit, as well as an empowered auto attack, and that's a super free electric Q proc, and that is going to deal a lot of damage. So we are buying the Sock Shoes here, of course mobility 
is super super important because without the W then Zoe is immobile. And then we have that ultimate guy, so that's like a portal uh, that makes Zoe um, step forward and then back to her original position. This is mainly used in combination with your Q or your E. Um, that's like used to extend the range and also allow you to engage and get some extra damage off. But one thing that's very important to know is that when you use that ultimate, the portal, and somebody CCs you, um, it's not going to matter because it will always put you back to your ori original position. So it's like an unstoppable ability. So you can use it to like counter CC abilities with. Um, you can also use it to dodge abilities, but you should never try to use it to like escape with because it is always going to put you back to your original position. Similar to like Yone's E. And also be extremely careful uh, about when you're using this ultimate uh, because if you're pretty close to the enemy champion and you use it, they can just wait and then they can use everything you have at the original position because you're always going to appear in that spot. So it can be pretty risky to use and just make sure that you are out of range of the enemy champion um, with your original position unless you can win the fight or like kill them. Also another thing with your W guys, um, if you already have a summoner spell and you want to pick something else up and you're not able to use the spell that you have right now, for example if you have exhaust right now and there's no one to exhaust, you just have to walk on top of the new keystone, summoner spell or item active and then just right click on it and then Zoe is going to swap the current one uh, with a new one. As I said, Zoe, um, if possible, she really wants to be pushing and this is what I meant with aiming the E behind them because they are going to try to sidestep it as soon as you go into that uh, portal ultimate. So this is how you can get a lot of free hits. This works in high elo, this works in low elo, this should work in most of your games guys. Um, so this is something that you should definitely be trying to do as much as possible until the opponent starts reading you and then you know you can play accordingly. But if you learn to use the bubble like this guys, then you are going to get a lot of free hits. And that will most of the time end up in you getting a free kill or you can blow the summoner spell. So that is going to give you a pretty big advantage. When you're pushing for objectives and such, make sure that you weave in abilities with the auto attacks. Because as I said, every single time you use an ability, then your next auto attack becomes empowered. And that empowered auto attack of course works on the towers as well. So if you want to push as fast as possible, then make sure that you win the abilities with the auto attacks. See, when you're able to pick up stuff with your W, you can really abuse that bonus movement speed to really kite people, escape fights, and maybe even get a kill and escape like I did right here. The Zoe is really really fun to play, but not that fun to play against. Um, she has some really bad matchups, um, like the set we're playing against right now, um, because she is immobile, so she's a pretty easy target for those assassins. But she has a very strong laning phase, so if you're really good at the champion, then you should be able to get a lead early on, and then you want to use that lead to snowball the early to mid game because that, that is where she is at her strongest. Now she does have a lot of damage in the late game, but as I said, her main damage and CC can be body blocked. So when people start grouping up, you know, in like a five versus five, it's a lot harder to find picks. So that's why in the early to mid game, where most of, most of the time it's going to be a one versus one, two versus two, three versus three and so on. That's where it's a lot easier for Zoe to find kills. Also use those walls to extend the range of your E guys. Um, you can toggle the um, range indicator in the start until you get used to the range uh, because it can really allow you to get some long range picks off. Remember the way you want to use ultimate, it also gives you vision in the spot so you can also kind of use it to like avoid face checking. 
because like you can use it to get a long range ward off or something but most of the time you do want to use it to increase the range of your E and your Q like this I did right here because that is going to increase the damage of your Q because the damage scales with distance traveled up to a cap. But the main thing about Zoe is that you have to hit the E. So you can see the range right here of that bubble. That range is absolutely insane. And if you hit an AD carry or something from this distance and you follow up with a full combo, you are going to one shot them. So just try uh, to push as much as possible if it's safe for you and then try to land those snipes with your Q and your E. Weave in those auto attacks as well and you can see, already see the amount of damage it's going to deal. So if you land a single long range Q at this point in the game guys then the opponent will most likely be forced out of the lane. And for the keystones, we do have several options, but this page I have showed right here, that is the absolute strongest page for her landing phase, because you get a lot of sustain with the um, time warp tonic as well as the biscuits, and then you have the electrocute for a lot of burst damage. But if you want better scaling, then you can of course also use Dark Harvest, that is going to give you a lot weaker landing phase, but Late game might be stronger depending on how many stacks you are able to get. So just won the Ludens Tempest, of course Zoe is the burst champion, um, so she wants as much damage as possible and that is what we are going to get with the Ludens Tempest. It's going to give us a lot of damage as well as a free magic pen, which is extremely strong against squishy targets. You can also be patient with your E guys because um, people randomly start sidestepping as soon as you are within range so you can kind of just wait it out and let them run into your ability so you don't have to like use the E immediately and try to like bait out their movement abilities and such and then you can use it. The thing is that People can't really use their flash to escape from Zoe because what happens when they do that is that when they flash away, Zoe is just gonna take your flash and then follow up. So flash is not that good against this champion um, and it also makes it really mobile when she's able to pick up so many different summon spells, especially in a fight because it's really really hard to escape from her. Now the stuff that you are able to pick up from the minions, it's complete RNG so sometimes you're going to get something that's really good, other times you're going to get something like a Protoss Claw that you can't really do much with. Um, I mean it will put you in melee range so you can like get an easy um, E hit but having something like a flash on your W or ignite or exhaust is of course really really OP, even the air frost active is also really good. So there are like few bad things that you can pick up with your W, but there are a lot of good things. So when you want to push guys, try to get some long range Qs off on the backline minions, because at this point in the game, a single Q is going to one shot the backline minions, so it allows you to push out the wave a lot faster, and then you can look for rooms. So it has really good wave clear early on, uh, but there are some champions that she's going to struggle against, and those are champions with way better wave clear or super high range. So something like a Malzahar for example is a really bad matchup for Zoe because his W Voidlings can block out your Q as well as your E so while he's FK showing you are not able to match that because his Voidlings are going to block you out. And then you have champions like the Sarath. Um, he just straight up outranges you, so you're ne never able to like um, damage him if you place it well. 
Meanwhile, he can just perma poke you from outside screen range. So those are the types of champions that you want to avoid if possible, but Zoe can actually do well into a lot of matchups. So the enemy mid laner is buying a lot of magic resistance. Um, that's of course annoying for Zoe, but we're gonna get the Shadow Flame because they do have a decent amount of shields. The Shadow Flame also gives you a lot of damage in the early game, especially against the Squishy team because that's where that uh, magic pen really comes in. And then you also get a lot of AP, and then when you combine that with a Rabidon Stith Cap, that is really going to add up. So Shadow Flame is like the item that you buy most of the time, um, right after the Ludens Tempest. But this game right here actually got an early Seeker Samgard and that is because they have a heavy AD team and we are playing against an Assassin mid so this was like the perfect early game purchase. And sometimes you will be able to get some blind um, bubbles off. When you can do that, that is really going to reward you, especially if your team is able to follow up. But you can always see if somebody got hit by that sound and that animation. Now you can al always see that animation when somebody gets hit, guys, so that way you know that um, you hit somebody with that E and then you can follow up with a Q. And if it's an AD carry, it's most likely going to one-shot them unless you are super far behind or they have magic resistance. You can see that Hexstringer really saved the uh, mid laner right there. That was a bit unfortunate. But yeah, that's the problem is that when people start stacking a lot of magic resistance, it's a lot harder for you to like uh, find picks. But you do have the option to buy void stuff. Um, that's something that we get later on in the game. Um, you need at least the Lunas Tempest and then if they're stacking a lot of magic resistance then you can opt into the Void stuff. You can also flash during your ultimate animation or while using your Q to like extend the range of it guys. Um, that is going to work of course and that gives you that extra bit of damage and if you know for sure that your Q is going to hit then you can do it. Remember to keep farming, like Zoe is pretty difficult to like maintain really high CS numbers with and that's because like her wake player is decent but like she struggles a lot when she's getting pushed in. Like when there are big waves nearby because like her abilities can get body blocked even though it's dealing AoE damage, the AoE zone is so small that most of the time you don't end up clearing out the entire wave. So it can take a while for her to clear out the wave compared to other champions with a really good wave player like Victor. So that's why it can be a bit difficult to like stay uh, up in CS numbers. So that's why you really want to prioritize it in the early game. Because getting into Silent is not very good at Zoe. Um, she is immobile. You can see that E right there. That's as what I told you guys early on is that People will be trying to sidestep it most of the time by walking backwards, so throw it right behind them and it should end up hitting them most of the time, giving you a free bubble and maybe a free kill as well. And that bubble right there somehow missed, I have no idea how. Um, that worked out, uh, but that actually ended up getting Draven killed, that's a bit unfortunate. But you can go to silence, but as I said, you do not want to be split pushing. Um, if you have support or somebody else with you, of course, you can stay there for extended time. But most of the time when you go to silence is to pick up a wave. And once you're done that, showing the wave, then you just regroup. Because you don't want to stay alone in the sideline unless you're like super, super fed. Because a split pusher in the sideline is going to absolutely destroy you. Especially in this Hullbreaker meta, um, where they buff up, buff up the cannon minion, um, giving it a lot of defensive resistances, meaning that mages 
are not able to clear out the uh, cannon minion. Like they're going to struggle so much. So if possible, you really want to avoid the side lane. Like really avoid it. So the only time you want to go there is to like help out your teammate or to pick up a wave and then you just regroup after you're done that. Because we are really fed here guys, um, of course we can deal with the uh, Mordekaiser but otherwise that would be really difficult. Another good thing is that we have the Shadow Flame. Now a lot of people for some reason think that it counters shielding, it does not. It just makes you deal increased damage when somebody um, has a shield. Not to the shield but like general damage because it gives you more um, magic pen. So it's not a direct counter to shielding um, like most people think for some reason uh, but it does like give you extra damage. Because the real counter to shielding is like that um, AD item the assassins have. Um, that is a real shield counting, uh, countering item. Um, that would be really cool if mages also had something similar to that, but I don't know if that would be too OP. But um, Shadow Flame is really good in the early game, guys. Like, really, really good, especially if you play into a squishy team. Now, there are cases where you don't want to buy it, and that's where when a lot of people are stacking magic resistance in the early game um, because the uh, magic pen you're getting, this is flat magic pen that means that it gets countered really easy when people start stacking magic resistance um, so in that case you want to get a void stuff instead so if they have a really tanky team then avoid buying the shadow flame because they are most likely going to buy magic resistance early on So the way that you play Zoe in teamfights and such is that you try to like stay nearby walls and you wait for the squishy targets um, to like walk up, you try to get a snipe with your E and then you follow up with a Q and auto tag and that should be enough. Now it is true damage with the E proc right there guys. so. You can also um, hit the tank, the front line, but the thing is Zoe does not have, you know, um, extended damage in a team fight. It's a champion that goes in, burst somebody, and then she goes out, wait for cooldowns to come back up again, so you really want to make it worth it. So preferably you want to hit a carry or like a squishy support or something that you can like one shot in a single combo. So be patient. You know, camp next to walls and stuff, uh, because that is going to increase the range of your E, as I said. Try to hit a squishy target, one shot them, and then go back, and then you wait. You wait for your cooldowns to come back up, and then you can re-engage. That's how you want to play Zoe. Um, she does not have, you know, extended DPS like a Cassiopeia or something. So this is how you want to play those burst mages, because they do have pretty high cooldowns as soon as they use everything they have. So our teammates are doing pretty well now, like they got pretty hard stormed early on, but they're doing okay now. Um, so you can also peel for your AD carry, you know, um, if like your AD carry is super fit guys and you just want to protect them then you can also peel for them with the bubble like you can cc whoever is trying to engage on top of your ad carry and then you just group up and kill that person asap so weaving in the auto attacks for the abilities um it's mostly important like in the mid to late game it's mostly important when you take down objectives you know the jungle camps the towers and such but like when you want to burst people in a single combo then you don't really get to do that a lot of the times because you're going to finish them off in a single combo um, so you don't get to like do that. 
but most of the time you just end up getting one empowered auto attack off and it should be enough actually if it's a squishy target. So coming in here with the early white stuff and that is because people are stacking magic resistance. Um, uh, Set has it, the top laner has it and Vi is also pretty tanky so it's really good to have it at this point in the game. But if they did not have any magic resistance and they have a pretty squishy team, I would just go straight for Ravenous Deathcap right now because that's going to give you a massive massive AP power spike. It is so satisfying landing those long range bubbles guys because that is going to reward you so much. Um, just keep in mind that your teammates sometimes they will randomly hit the target that is asleep and if they do so it is going to awake, um, it's going to cancel out the CC right? And it can be really annoying especially when you try to like time up a long range Q. So make sure that they know they're not supposed to hit the target unless they can kill the target. Because that is something that happens pretty frequently in low elo, especially if people don't know how Zoe works. So Zoe is all about the E guys, because if you miss that E then you're going to lose a lot of damage. So you really have to learn how to aim that E properly. Um, you are going to miss it a lot of the times, like people might have movement abilities, summoner spells. Or maybe they're just really good at sidestepping, but it's really important that you learn to hit this E most of the time. Because this is the ability that allows you to um, find picks. And you saw that booster item active um, from the first minion that we dropped. Um, that is some of the worst actives that you can get. But it's a good thing that Zoe is really able to use most of the um, summoner spells and item active she gets. Um, so there are only a few bad ones that you can get and luckily it's pretty rare that they pop up. But it is a champion that snowballs really hard, like she snowballs extremely hard like an assassin and you can see what happens when a fat Zoe lands a bubble onto an AD carry, they just know they're dead. Like there's no point even using their flashes or anything. They just know what's going to happen and that's also what makes people hate playing against Zoe. Well she's really fun to play. Um, it's really fun to like pick up different summon spells, item actives, you know, and use it against the enemy champion. They try to flash away from you, you just take that flash and then you follow up. So it's a pretty fun and versatile champion. Um, it's something I can highly recommend picking up if you like the kit. You know, if you like its champion with a lot of burst damage. As well as mobility uh, with a W, um, then Zoe might be the champion for you. Just be careful that she does have a lot of um, a lot of hard matchups, like not necessarily super hard counters, but she does have a lot of difficult matchups that you need to know how to play around. But just keep pushing down for your objectives. Remember, it's very important that you weave in abilities with your auto attacks when you push for objectives. Because it's pretty much a Lich Bane passive, meaning that you can push down objectives a lot faster if you do so. Um, so super super important, always remember to do that when pushing down objectives. Not as important in the late game when you fight enemy champions, because you're just playing for the burst damage. Unless they're like super close range, because then you're not able to get long range cues off. In that case, it's fine to weave win those uh, auto attacks. But this was how to play Zoe guys, I hope this was helpful, as always, thanks for watching and see y'all in the next one.